Hello, my name's Lisa, and if this is your first time here, then thank you for choosing to click on this video. If you are a returning subscriber, then just know I really do appreciate you. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my channel members. Your support means everything to me. If you would like to share any content with me, the instructions on just how to do that are in the description below. And if you like anti-MLM content, then please consider subscribing. Today's video is coming from a top Monate Hun, and she is in the 15 MDC club. If you don't know what that means, then stay tuned because you will soon find out. And boy, has she got a serious story to tell us today. So buckle up and let's get going. We're going to do some real talk tonight. Something that's been on my heart for a while and I posted a reel about it earlier. So I'm going to be going into more detail about my experiences with that. So if you guys have ever experienced burnout, questioning your direction in life, anything like that, this is going to be for you. What happened in my last several years of my journey? I worked super, super hard, as some of you guys know, built massive organizations. Not on my own, by the way, had a lot of help. Okay, real talk, real talk. All right, so I worked really, really hard, got super overwhelmed with um, pressure. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have ever experienced burnout, feeling a lot of pressure and stuff like that. And the story behind that was that like, if you guys don't know, I um, started network marketing about nine years ago. I was one of the first ones in our company and I didn't find success because I was one of the first. She's telling us that she was one of the first ones in the company in 2014. And that's also when Tony Van Choik joined and she was the, the very first market partner so this lady's not going to be very far behind her in joining so she was probably in the top 10 and she's telling us that that doesn't make any difference well i don't agree with that it makes a huge massive difference and they try to portray to everyone that it doesn't matter where you join because you can still earn money but their income disclosure statement doesn't support what they're saying at all. I just, I put in a lot of hours, like tons of hours. I was sleeping four hours a night and I was working every hour. Like, ask my husband. <laughs> like, you guys who built it with me knew that. Sorry to be stopping it again so quickly, but you were working 20 hours a day. Time freedom. When you listen to people who are trying to get you to join a multi-level marketing company, they say you can stay at home with your kids. Well, if you're working 20 hours a day, what good is it you being at home with your kids? Because you're obviously not looking after them in a proper manner, in my opinion. And I happen to know that you do have a daughter. And nine years ago, she would have been less than 10 years old. So that would have been a time when she would have really needed you. And yet you were working 20 hours a day. So I got really burnt out one year. I just, and it, it just happened over time. And it literally almost killed me. You guys, like my burnout almost destroyed me. And so I pulled back. Yeah, if you guys don't know the story, like literally I built six multi-million dollar legs. Um, I've got three more on the way. And I mean, like literally I had like some girls that were making some serious money. So a lot of dedication, a lot of time. I understand what it takes, okay? You built six multi-million dollar legs and it caused burnout to the degree that you ended up in the hospital. Well, I'm sorry, I don't think that was worth it. And as we're gonna go on, I think we're gonna find out that you don't hang on to them, do you? And I wondered if I had that left in me to do it again, like no joke. So I pulled back, I took a couple days off, turned into a couple weeks. My heart started like getting away from it. And I started getting like discouraged. And the biggest thing for me, you guys, was that I really didn't think that I could handle the pressure. I didn't think I could handle the stress. 
Like I didn't think my health would even hold out. So I actually ended up in the hospital several times. You guys can go watch previous videos on that story. I don't wanna talk about it tonight. <laughs> but I looked at other avenues. I looked at a lot of other avenues. I looked at opening up RV parks. I looked at, we were in Oklahoma. I looked at partnering with cannabis businesses because it was literally exploding down there. Y'all, I looked at so many opportunities. I looked at businesses. So what happened was after I pulled back, I started uh, relaxing, started relieving the pressure. I felt like the expectations started dropping a little bit. You know, this is like real talk. A lot of people like get burned out and quit. If you're working 20 hours a day, seven days a week, it's hardly surprising that people get burned out and quit, is it? I mean, what kind of life is that? And you've got no benefits. You're a 1099 contractor. So if you quit, then you've got absolutely nothing. At least in a nine to five job, if you are burned out, you can go on the sick and still get paid. Doing multi-level marketing, you don't have those choices. So I'm a big believer in going all in, all in. You're gonna quit shit or get off the pot. <laughs> That's how I feel. So I, I, you guys, I pulled back. I literally like, I stopped. I stopped working. I stopped plugging in. I stopped getting inspired. I stopped checking in with my people. I stopped reaching out. I stopped talking about Monet. I stopped talking about everything, you guys. I started finding other things that like entertained my time. Snowboarding, <laughs> found one wheeling. I found so much stuff. I was found a lot of hobbies, okay? Imagine what you can do with free time and money and your husband's retired, okay? <laughs> I would imagine with my husband retired, free time and money, then I could actually live my life the way I wanted to instead of working 20 hours a day. So I pulled back and over time, I just caught myself going out to eat with my husband and I'd sit there and I'd look at my phone and it would be like a, ugh, my heart would hurt, like hurt. No joke, I'd be like, Oh, like literally almost crying at the table because I missed my friends. I missed people texting me. I missed work. I missed it. You missed all the toxic positivity, the love bombing and the false community that you are surrounded by. And I feel like if I didn't pull all the way back, I don't know if I would have missed it. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I never quit. But you guys, I literally slacked a lot. I know what it takes to build this business. I know why she didn't quit. It's because she was still getting paid for the work of all the people that were still beavering away and giving 12, 16, 20 hours a day of their time that she was getting paid from. That's why she didn't quit. So, real talk. Like, I wanted to quit. I looked at other ways to make money. And then I was like, you know what? I could do this. I could probably make this amount of money. I could do this. I could make this amount of money. You know, I looked at like a lot of stuff. Like some of you guys are looking at other stuff right now too. So I'm just like giving you a heads up. There was nothing out there that satisfied my heart. Nothing. I missed the people. I missed the challenge. I missed having expectations. I literally missed the expectations. You're saying that there is nothing out there because of what you missed. But that doesn't mean there's nothing out there, does it? It just means that there was nothing out there that you personally wanted to do. It's not the same for everybody else. And I feel that you are sugarcoating the opportunity because, hey, it's the end of the month and you're not the only person who has put out their story at the end of the month, are you? What happened? I've never told anybody this story. You guys get first hand. So what happened in December of last year, an email went out on accident that said that I had earned $15 million in the company and I didn't know it. No one told me. I started getting text messages from my friends and I was like, oh my gosh, here I am <laughs> mentally checked out of my business and I got this email and I felt so unworthy, like so unworthy. I had no idea I had done it. I'd been sitting on the back burner. I'd looked at other opportunities, you guys. I looked at everything, not network marketing so much. I did a little bit because I had to remind myself of what I had. And you guys, like, 
I still get people messaging me today about other opportunities every day. Every, every day, every day. Maybe two, maybe three, maybe 10 messages a day. An email accidentally went out, did it? Do you think it was those in a corporate position noticing that you had taken a step back so they were going to snap you back into action like the cult it, it is, maybe? And I've looked at some of that stuff. And I just decided, like, in December when I got that email, I was like, wow, how ungrateful have I been to not give back to my team? Over this time that I have held back, I have not helped make an impact. And here they are recognizing me for 15 MB MDC. Like that sucked. That freaking sucked. That sucked worse than anything I've ever experienced in my business. I was expecting a congratulations from a couple of certain people at some point, And I was like, I never got it. And I was like, why do I feel so upset about this? Why is this bugging me so much? And it was because I wasn't expecting it from anyone else. I was expecting it, hoping for it from myself. 15 MDC does not mean that she has made $15 million in the time that she's been in the company. So don't be fooled by what she's saying there. Yes, she has made a lot of money, but it wasn't $15 million. Don't forget, you have to take out all of the expenses the expenses of the product, the expenses of going to trips, the expenses of putting on meetups in our home, and also the expenses of having people over where she's going to wash their hair and teach them how to do certain things in my name. She has to pay for all of that. So don't ever be led to believe the amount of money they tell you from the million dollar club that they're in, that that is what they've actually made because they haven't and it's not even close to that either. And I knew God was so disappointed in me. I literally felt my heart breaking. I didn't deserve the 15 MDC credit. I didn't deserve the checks I was getting every single month. I was not making an impact. I wasn't reaching out to other people, encouraging them to keep going. And here everyone is messaging me saying, congratulations, I'm so proud of you. And I'm like, you shouldn't be, you should not be proud of me. Somehow I just can't see God sitting there and saying, Julie, I am so disappointed in you. Mm, don't get me wrong, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. But I just can't see him making an example of you specifically. I think you're giving yourself delusions of grandeur there. If this business is so totally amazing, why do you have to reach out to your team to get them to keep going? Is it because you are making money and everybody else isn't? Okay, I've taken a step back. You guys, it was my own guilt that got my butt back into action. Like it killed me to know that I was like getting recognized for something that I didn't deserve. So in January, I decided that I was going to make up for it. I started plugging in every single day. Felt really awkward, felt really wobbly. I just tried to get back, back into it. No joke, I just tried to get back into it. And I just decided I'd choose my heart. It was so hard to accept that stuff. It was harder to accept the fact that I was sitting by the wayside when God was blessing me every freaking day and I wasn't picking up the shovel. So if you guys have ever t thought about taking a step back, I encourage you to do it. But I hope that you remember my story because it sucks. It sucks feeling undeserving of something so much. The first time I ever got a check that was uh, unheard of, just unheard of, you guys. I, 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 my check was growing back in like 2018. It was, it was insane. I was literally like working my butt off and I got this check. I could not believe the number. Um, some of you guys know how much it is because I still talk about how impactful that day was, but Senior Luis, who's the chairman of our company, he speaks Spanish, he had to have a translator talk, but he called me and he told me my check and he wanted to say congratulations. And I literally 
that was years ago. I sunk. I sunk. In 2018, you're saying you received a massive check. Are you saying you haven't received one since? Because that's certainly how it sounds. We all know that my name is in dire straits at the moment. And is that why all of you top leaders are doing a story at the end of the month? And especially this month? And some people need to heal sometimes and I support them. I'm like, yes, go heal. Take some time off. Go do you, boo. You have to because I hope that people do take a step back and they feel the lack. I, I hope that they feel like that hard was not so hard. That hard was not that hard. But I wanted to come on here because I just wanted you guys to know that I've looked at other stuff. I've, I've tried other stuff. I've done every, I've, tr I've looked at other businesses. I've looked at other ways to make an income. But there's no other way that I'd rather make an impact and it's right here. I don't feel like God could use me like this on another way, in another way, in another platform. Jennifer's like saying that I'm worthy. And I'm literally telling my girls this every day. Like I tell my girls this all the time. I'm like, you're worthy of this paycheck. You're worthy of it all. You know, but when I took a step back, I really did not. I felt like it whenever I was working hard and then I felt it whenever I took a step back. So I still struggle with this because I know what it does to people, but you guys listen. She knows what it does to people, but she's still encouraging you to get in it. I'm sorry, but I don't think any amount of money is worth your health and possibly your life. And the reason why I wanted to share this with you is because I had to choose over and over again my hard. Like, your hard can pay you large, large, large dividends. <laughs> in the emotional and spiritual impact that you can make in someone's life on this platform. Like this exact one, I've seen it, I've utilized it. And it's the Monade effect, yeah. It's the Monade effect. Like, I'm not a sucker for some like one company. I'm a sucker for my family. This is my family, this is my home. Like it's very, very personal to me to work with you guys. It's all very personal. I don't look at numbers more than I do a, a person. Like I'm always like, okay, what is this person going through? What's going on? Are you saying you're the exception to the rule there, Julie? You don't look at them as a number, you look at them as a person. Wow. Most people look at these people they recruit as a dollar sign. I'm not so sure I believe that you are different though. One of my favorite things about this business is that I cannot get fired unless I go against compliance. I don't have a boss saying you make too much money. I need to let you go. So that way I can bring in someone smaller who's gonna make less and that way we can make more money for the company. So I want you guys to know this. I can't get fired unless I go against compliance and I am definitely never gonna risk that. So I'm never gonna sign up in another company. This is my home. It is not worth the risk. Let's just unpack that a little bit, shall we? You can get fired. You are a 1099 contractor. It is not your own business. You are not the CEO. You do not make the decisions. So yes, you can get fired. And also I understand what it takes to get momentum going. So if you decide to take a break, I just want you to know it's gonna be really hard to get the momentum going again. It's tough. But I promise if you do it true to yourself, if you do it true in the right way, and if you freaking dig your heels in and you try as hard as possible to make an impact in every single person's life, I promise this will work for you. You cannot make that promise to people. The FTC says that 99.7% of people who join a multi-level marketing company will make zero money and most of them will lose money. It's okay you saying that I promise you that if you work hard, this will work for you. But statistically, that is utter bull crap. Why wouldn't I do this? Like, why wouldn't I? And you guys, my hair sucked when I started. It wasn't about the hair. It was about the fact that these people had a lot of money and they were willing to pay out really well for people who had the same goal as them, which was building this business, getting it in people's hands, getting the revenue going. They were gonna pay me really good and you really good to get that going. So I chose my hard, that's all I did. 
You say it's not about the hair care and never a truer word has been spoken, has it? I have to ask a question and I'm asking for a friend here. Nearly every time I see a monate home on a live or on a Zoom or just basically on a camera, they are all wearing a hat. What is that about? Is it because your hair is so bad that you have to cover it up? And if they're not wearing a hat, they have it piled up on top of their heads. Just seems kind of suspicious to me. And I chose my heart to get back into it. Like after I had beat myself up so hard. You guys, I literally cried for three weeks after I got that email. I did not look up for three weeks. I wanted to stay in bed. I was so depressed. And it doesn't matter where you're at in life. It doesn't matter if you're deserving or not. Some of us just get that feeling and it's awful. It's absolutely awful. So I'm here to tell you guys, like, you are worthy. God called people to do some insane things. And sometimes he's going to call you to do some insane things. And for me, getting back into it was insane. It was insane. I don't know why I was going to do it. I didn't know. I didn't know what would happen. And if you guys have had people leave your team, I want to just share with you right now how many people have left my team. But I'm still able to live the lifestyle I'm doing, have the income I have. You guys, I've, I've had to bury one of my million dollar earner legs. Julie Smith, she passed away. She was one of my greatest leaders. Another organization, she passed away. Another organization, she left, talked crap on me, took her organization, and the whole team exploded. She was a director leg. I had two other director legs shortly after that quit, and last year I had another director leg quit. Now the truth is really coming out as to why she was so close to quitting. It's because she lost nearly half of her downline. Just let that sink in that people can just stop working any time they want to because it is not a job, it is not their own business. Can you imagine working 20 hours a day every day and building up all these legs and all of these teams and it's all gone in the blink of an eye? Multi-level marketing companies can get shut down, you know. They quite often get fined by the FTC to the tune of millions and billions of dollars. Imagine what that does to a company. Most won't survive, will they? So just remember, you are taking a huge risk. That's why I say, don't join a multi-level marketing company. And I know if someone decides to leave, I'm going to bless them and I'm going to wish a whole new group back in. So I want you to know that if you're looking at another opportunity, shit or get off the pot. Like seriously, quit screwing around. Just make a decision. I, for one person, don't think she is going to wish you all the best. She's going to block you. And she is going to berate you to anybody who will listen. She is going to run you into the ground. Because that's what they all do when you leave. They say it's your fault. You didn't work hard enough. Well, we all know that's a load of crap, don't we? So in two or three months, I literally had like eight wine and washes. Like no joke. In those months, she had eight wine and washes. That means she's inviting a lot of people over to a venue or indeed her home where she is providing the wine and the product and washing people's hair all out of her own pocket. I have to ask, is she qualified as a hairdresser? Uh, no, she's not. Is it legal where she lives to be washing someone's hair? Mm -hmm. That's something I'm not too sure about. But I'll bet my bottom dollar it's not. I was recruiting like freaking mad woman. I'm still at it hard this year. It was actually one of my greatest recruiting 
months I've had in five years, the past two months. Oh, I'm a mess. Can you imagine going five years without having great recruiting months? It's no wonder people quit, is it? Wow. I think Julie had an awful lot to say in this video and if you are still here at this point then I really do appreciate you. If you've enjoyed the video then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a totally amazing day and I will see you on the next video. Bye bye for now.